bad, but it's not going to happen. Now time to see what is going to go through for blue side. Inevitably, one powerful pick at least will be left up. We'll so the Aurelia, the Zaya, the Draven, all still available. Do you do you do you ban Reckless's Draven? I uh, so one of the uh, I think kind of glaring similarities between the likes of Reckless and Crownshot, and Betius did point it out on the analyst desk, is that there does seem to be, you know, like, they're masters of very specific champions, and that their pool aren't as wide as other ADCs in the league when you look at someone like Kabe. Um, now, when they do get those champions, and Kaisa certainly can fit into Reckless's wheelhouse, they can be really devastating on them. I'm not, I'm not calling it yet. Until I see it locked in, there's the Aurelia. Okay, this is a champion that has been taken off the board repeatedly. Now we're gonna see what it's going to do in the hands of Whippo and or Nemesis. Of course, the comfort of flex picks here. Whippo's Aurelia, not one I'm terribly familiar with, but Nemesis, of course, knows his way around the champion. And I have to assume that SK Gaming knew exactly what was going to happen there. There's a reason why Aurelia has been banned so frequently. She is such respect, uh, has is so respected as a champion, so they must have an answer here in either the mid or top lane position. But now with the Nico and the Nautilus, SK responding with a bit of flexibility of their own. We did see top lane on hit Nico earlier in the day. And I know you kind of you kind of like seeing that champion. I'm not a big fan, but you do enjoy the top lane Nico. Yeah, because I feel like you can still get, uh, we saw Wonder play the press the attack top lane Nico earlier today. And I still feel like you can get a lot of kind of bang for your buck from the champion. You don't have to go into the AP route with the Glacial Augment um, because like Kennen, Nar, and uh, Nico, they kind of do all the same thing. It's long range poke. And it's hard to find range champions up into that top lane. It's like Nico, Kennen, Nar, and Jace. Yeah. Now, of course, the Sivir, though, locked in. That is a Fnatic special, something that we're used to seeing. Paired, of course, with an aggressive early game jungler in the hands of Broxa. Always good to see. But now, the response on the opposite side will be the Zaya. So, a little bit of safety there in that champion pick, but also a lot of potential for Chain CC. One spell shield that might not be enough for Reckless on the bottom side. Of course, though, he, like you said, he is the Sivir expert, so hopefully he'll be able to navigate this uh, this matchup in terms of focusing more so on crown shot it's interesting when i look at sk and fanatic again they have a lot of similarities they find a lot of their strengths through their uh team fighting i feel like sk are a bit more scrappy in terms that they like to fight a lot more often whereas fanatic kind of curate the perfect moment the perfect punch and then they just use maybe one two and then knock you out so um not as trigger happy as maybe sk gaming are but you know it's about scaling adcs it's about a lot of team fights the only time, or the only thing I'll contest you on is that they are very trigger happy on teleports specifically to bottom lane. Everything else, completely agree with, but they every time- They give a lot of resources I, to Reckless. I wish I could say it was like Reckless on a specific champion, but no, anytime I see Reckless in the game, I'm ready for TPs to be spent on the bottom side of the map. Of course, for the top side though, the Jace has been taken away. Olaf banned, the Braum banned as well. One final ban for Fnatic before they pass it back to SK. And SK Gaming on the red side, we'll get the luxury of last pick here, see exactly where some of these champions are going to go. Feels like with the Olaf and now with the Lee Sin that they're trying to make sure that Broxa gets full control and full say about what happens in this jungle. He wants to be the guy who's setting the pace, who's being aggressive, um, as well as the Rek'Sai ban. So that's Quadra ban for junglers with Sejuani taken away on SK side. And they had to know that this one was coming. Pretty much the only thing left. And thus you wanted to get real creative, wanted to go for something like a Kindred. Karthus, of course, uh, nerfed repeatedly over a few patches here since MSI, but uh, you know, not going to see it quite yet in the LEC. Still technically a lot of flex picks coming out of SK Gaming. We can make our assumptions that it's probably a top lane Nico, there's probably a Jarvan jungle and a Nautilus support, but they really haven't shown their hands until that final pick gets in because all three of those picks can go virtually anywhere. Yeah. The Thresh, though, now locked in, will give a little bit more safety to Reckless on the bottom side, of course, in the form of the Lantern, as well as the Flay to disrupt some of the engage potential from the Nautilus. So um, this is a bit of an abstract interaction and kind of concept, and I'll cover it when I see it in the game as, yay, Nar. Uh, Sivir is really reliant on, like, her wave clear is really important, but unlike the likes of, like, Lucian and Ezreal, because she doesn't have a dash inbuilt, she's more about reactive wave clear rather than proactive pressure. You know, it's really scary for a Sivir when that mid lane is crashing in for her to walk up and then just start pushing it and create a pressure point for a team, she has to wait for the wave to crash so she doesn't get to create pressure. By pairing her with a Thresh with the Death Sentence, you're actually able to give Sivir the ability to create pressure points because she can walk forward, abuse that wave clear, and then grab the Lantern back to safety. And interesting now, so we'll see how Reckless reacts around that, if he can get a lead and maybe 
forego some of those weaknesses, or if he is forced to play at kind of that standard Sivir tempo. But the Gnar has been locked into the top side for Whippo, will now go face to face with the Nico Azir, the response on the opposite side. Pyrian's going to have to survive here in the early game. We've seen what can happen when Aurelia gets started, just how much power that champion brings to the table. So in talking with uh, LPL teams when I used to cast back there, Gnar was kind of seen as the worst Kevin uh, Kennen, but in the same idea where you really just want to abuse the, the range. And why the LPL teams felt that he was the worst Kennen is because you never really wanted to be in Mega Gnar. You always wanted to have the range of mini Gnar and continue to whittle people down. Now that we've seen Kennen take a couple of nerfs, uh, especially in how he can use his uh, resistances for trades and it's been moved onto his ultimate so he's more about team fighting the laning i actually expect nar to climb up into priority where more top laners are okay i could take cannon here or maybe i could look for the nar because i feel the trade-off is better and one of the things that i do love about nar is that even if you are put in a deficit if sk wants to focus on that top side as that we have seen self do so many times nar still always has that potential for the ideal team fight for that three seconds of hard cc rank 16 just combine the Gnar with the Wallop, get so much done in a team fight. But both of these teams poised for team fighting. You talked about the similarity in styles, and it feels like we will see that clash here on the Rift. Our fourth game of the day, and so much to see. How good are Fnatic? How good is Soccer? How good is SK? Now coming into the split, it is time to find out. Fnatic versus SK. There's not going to be any crazy level one shenanigans from what it looks like thus far, folks. Some of the Fnatic fans may be disappointed. Of course, something that they are legendary for. But as we keep our eyes on the early game, I see two champions in the hands of the respective junglers, Frostgren, that can totally destroy people in the early game. Yes, which is why I'm actually really paying attention. Fnatic are famous for their level ones, particularly their late invades, and any type of information that they get with where the enemy jungler starts um, and how Broxa uses that, not just in the level ones, but in the level two and the level three. So they clearly see where the vision is. Now, how will Broxa manipulate that information to create a, uh, a very practice window of opportunity for Fnatic? For now, will we see? Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, I was baited. Apologies, folks. I got really excited. I was like, crown shots on the top side. It's a lane now. It's Nika. It changes the champion icon. I'm gullible. Hopefully, Fnatic are not as gullible. Crown shot just using ability. So any doubt has now been oh, dispelled. I got so troll the MSI because what they'll do is they'll uh, throw out the clone as like the support and then they'll change. The, and you could actually be confused that there's two people up there. Oh, that's actually my favorite Nika tech. Of course, a little bit of a body block there. Throws forward the Shape Splitter, hoping to force the Boomerang to bounce back early in the trade. And Nemesis is going to get poked out here at the level 1, of course, really, really needing that level 2 before she's going to be able to threaten Pyrian whatsoever. But Pyrian getting level 2 first means he will have the lane priority. Yeah, and looking for the Airy, um, so again, versatility and flexibility in Keystone for Azir in particular, it feels like going for the Airy, you are relying more on that poke as opposed to something like the Lethal Temple that we've seen run in the LCK. Uh, so it feels like Pyrian's looking at Nemesis and looking at Aurelia like, okay, we know that they're going to pick Aurelia. I feel okay taking Azir into this matchup and I'm just gonna hold her at an arm's length and we're just gonna play the slow whittle yeah. game as opposed to like the Sand Soldier in your face game. Cause I gotta be honest, if you are in combat long enough to get some value out of lethal tempo, you're probably already winning your lane against Aurelia. Because that just, I think if your ideal world is getting four autos against Aurelia and trading, you're probably dead. And that's something that Pyrian painfully aware of, of course. As we looked away for a brief moment, Aurelia is now horribly far ahead in the XP game and has the lane pretty much frozen in her favor as now we have some aggression on the bottom side. Dream's taking a lot there. Level two capitalized on well by the side of Fnatic and Broxa now moving into the mid lane. Level three Broxa dives, not something that I have seen in a while. Well, they go for it here. self now moving to the top side is going to be very late if they do try to go for it. The flash forward, oh the side no. step on the cocoon though, could be disastrous. Now trying to dash to safety and backing off. self does step back to cover, but they get the flash out in the end, traded for Broxas. Yeah, and if they're able to punish now as you're not having access to the flash, because that was a lot expended for Broxa, also losing access to the Scuttle Crab here. So self -made, Broxa, he took the gamble, he went for the flash, tried to find the cocoon, missed. self -made now gets to invade and really start dictating about where he's going to attack on this map, taking away and denying that Scuttle. And I want to see exactly how self and Sakurai interact. Of course, we saw 
Whirlip for the entirety of last season, but now they engage on the bottom side a lot. He's gonna be able to go down on Hillisang after Shock, mitigating some of that damage with the TP. Bot side for Fnatic, as predicted in Champion Select. Now if Nemesis though, moves forward a good side step from Dreams, but I still think he's gonna get taken down. First Blood going through for Nemesis in the end. And because Pyrian had been forced back, Nemesis doesn't lose anything in return. You can see that the wave is actually neutralized into the mid lane, just about to crash into his tower. And Nemesis is going to take a quick stroll back to mid lane, pick up all that farm, and not fall any far behind. He's going to miss two creeps of X. Nope, not. Uh, okay. Never mind, one creep of XP. Excellent position for Nemesis to now be in. He's going to pick up the wave. We'll have a CS lead. It's going to be incredibly comfortable. Finding an appropriate time to buy without the TP may be a struggle as he moves further into this lane, but. Everything is coming up in the favor of Nemesis right now, and any time an Aurelia gets a lead, I feel like you just have to be scared. Yeah, uh, the good news is, is that Pyrian still does have access to his TP, that he's actually able to walk back into his lane, and he can try to play this one very safe, wait for that flash cooldown to come back up before looking for anything dicey. But I think Pyrian knew from the beginning that this was going to be an uphill climb, and uh, He's not here to lane. He's here to pick up the farm. If he gets the opportunity, he'll look for it, but otherwise it's about playing safe now. He's here to watch, you know. He'll wait. He'll get his time, one or two items That's into the game. That's actually a really important ward because so many junglers are using the mid lane cross pass so that they can get very quick access into the river, especially when a mid laner is pushed up. And because Pyrian doesn't have access to flash, he's just assuming that the wave will be near his tower. So making sure that he can get the vision to catch out Broxo when he decides to cross mid lane. And of course, also incredibly important because when you, you look at who you're playing against, because Selfmade is usually the guy who dictates the pace of the game for SK in the early games. So not only are you setting up Broxa for success, or not only are you limiting what Broxa can do, you're setting Selfmade up for success with something closer to perfect information. But Broxa, despite that vision, has still found a way forward. Pyrian has to be careful. No flash wave. Well, the Shifting Sands is there for now. The step forward, the stun does connect. Where's Pyrian going to go? Shifting Sands, not used quite yet. Trying to buy a bit of time. Where's he gonna go? Must have used it in the lane already, because now he's going to die. Nemesis finds the kill. Level six coming in as well. Just too clean right there. Uh, has the phage, made sure that he lined up the stun. Nailed down Pyrian. He didn't have the flash, and you could see when Elise approached him that he was trying to dodge, but Brox is like, I don't need to hit the cocoon. I can just use the repel and gap close onto you. Yeah, just wait. Wait till you see the dash come out, but it looks like it was off cooldown. Selfmade can move to the top side. The knockup is going to be there. Well dodged there. Now going in onto Sakura, looking for the 1v1, but Selfmade is on the way up. Whippo in Meganar. SK going to give him that respect. Eyes on the plates for the side of Fnatic. Still going to be a significant amount of gold. And a split between Broxa and Whippo here. Selfmade, though, still hovering, still ready to make that play. It would uh, certainly be death because he doesn't know where Nemesis is. Now that he has vision that Nemesis has returned back into the mid lane, they knew that Nemesis had uh, kited up to the top lane. Now Selfmade should find some confidence to maybe make a play and speed a play. Experience like, I cannot lane, maybe let's go bot. And once again, the follow up is insane. If he is able to make his way to the bot lane, maybe throw a few people back. But instead, we'll just opt to remove the blast cone, walk through the jungle, we'll get spotted on this trinket. Coming through from the zombie ward, it looks like, and now returns to the mid lane. So Pyrian hasn't really been able to participate too much in the game yet, and it does feel like Fnatic are the team to dictate the pace. Ever since Nemesis got that kill on the bottom side, he's been pretty much in absolute control. Yeah, Pyrian's flash, like you said, though, about to come back up, so it's going to get a little bit better here. I still feel like while Nemesis has been the big hold it. Oh, Hillisang immediately gets engaged on free hook for the Nautilus. Anytime Hillisang throws his out. That's just a bit of a head scratcher. It's it's day one, guys. It's game one. Gotta get the rust off. Maybe do some stretches. Excellent heads up play by Dreams. And then of course, that's just one of those XD moments. It, yeah, and that's part of the reason why you often see Nautilus picked into Thresh is because you have the luxury of just throwing out your hook in response to Thresh's hook animation. But and then you just have like easier CC with yeah, onto your kit and deny him an important piece of his CC and damage. So difficult situation there for Hillisang. I. We say this about how saying he takes risks, for sure. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. That one did not. Luckily for him, the kill does not go over to Crown Shot. It will go over to Dreams. So their supportal combat can continue. But Crown Shot, I think, would much prefer to have the gold for now, though. Eyes on the top side of the map. Soccer looking to line up a snare with the minions, potentially. Stepping forward, though, Whippo looking a lot more comfortable in this lane. Very defensive itemization here. Double Ruby Crystal into the Merc Treads. 
not interested in getting chunked out. Uh, it feels like Whippo has really, uh, again, we're using this word weak side uh, top laner, and it's not to imply anything about their skill. It's simply just the numbers advantage usually dictates it. You're not getting resources. The jungler's not camping your lane. No one's roaming up there. You're kind of left open on an island, and Whippo, that's kind of been his identity for Fnatic in spring, and he is playing it much closer to the chest this time around with that defensive itemization. Yeah, king of the weak side. The Gangplank champion, of course. Do the same on Gnar. See how it shapes up once we get those first items coming in. I assume it will still be the Black Cleaver for Gnar, though we will have to find out. Dreams itself made stepping forward. Hook will connect onto the Nautilus this time. Brox is there for a lot of immediate damage. Aftershock has not been proctored. James is going to be very tanky as he walks away. Self-made. Does down that Cataclysm, but an immediate flash out. I don't know if that was worth it. I feel like that's one of those testing moments about how much damage and how tanky Nautilus really is. But they're going back for round two. There's no Aftershock on Dreams. He will get popped in a second. If Fnatic do want to commit to the play. Also, um, Sakurai there, making sure that he was pushed the wave forward. And because Whippo is playing weak side and the wave is getting shoved into him, um, it opens up those abilities for the Nico to start cheating towards that mid lane, possibly look to make plays with the team. But Whippo, happy to have the pressure. Also, the tower plate as well. You can see a pretty significant CS difference starting to build, but SK Waiting the in the brush there. Big wave is pushed into Nico right now, so it, it's not as big as it looks right now, so you should start to clean that up. We'll see. <laughs> it's still like 10 CS, Yeah, absolutely. It's not the, 20 CS. I was like, I, I, well, my, more of my commentary was, how many CS is Nico actually going to get under tower? And a few is the answer. Soccer getting about three or four there. And as you mentioned, still the 10, DF, or 10 CS deficit, almost a 2K goal lead now in the favor of Fnatic. 10 minutes into the game. Two kills, of course, going to be a big part of that CS lead in the top lane, but feels like neither uh, side really pulling a trigger on a major play yet. No towers have gone down. No big objectives have gone down. It's not a cloud. It is an ocean, so you do expect teams to fight over it at least a little bit in the early game. And uh, both teams are actually completely comfortable to take this gentleman's hand uh, handshake if they want, just decide, hey, guys, we're cool farming it up. One team's got an Azir and a Zaya. The other one has a... Uh, a Sivir. Yeah, let's talk, because we've talked a lot today about one item team comps. You know, we've seen a lot of them, we've seen a lot of the illusions. Aurelia, obviously a very strong champion. I want to, is this a one item game or is this like a three item game? Are we just waiting for the 80 carries to get powered up and ready to go? I mean, there's different bridge points and especially with uh, Aurelia running around with the Trinity Force at 11 minutes into the game, it can start to speed up. We talk about kind of like bridge champions or, or bridging points. You're looking at champions that have um, action in the early and the mid game to mm -hmm. kind of like Pass the the baton, if you will. Yeah. This is a relay race. So you carry here, I carry later. So like Elise yeah. carries early game. Presumably someone else can then impact mid to late. And the terrifying thing about Aureli is it feels like she never really has to give up the baton. She's like, she's got it in the early game, she gets it in the mid game, and then late game she's still absolutely terrifying, which is why we normally see her banned. What do you call champions that always have the baton, Frosco? Is there a name? Hussein Bolt. Oh. I was okay. I, was I went say, with the race. I, I was uh, yeah yeah. I was the sprint. The sprinting metaphor. I was just gonna say overpowered. But you know we, we each have our own. He's still overpowered. <laughs> Can't stop him now. Fnatic going towards the bottom side. Are set up to just continue to pressure here. Crown shot has to be very careful about stepping forward. Of course, does have the luxury of the ultimate as well as the cleanse. That is a very safe crown shot. Will use the ultimate, does not want to burn the cleanse in the exchange. Clears out the wave as well, so nicely played. And Brox are just going to move right back up into the mid lane. Perfect vision on the bottom side for Fnatic. Yeah, this is Fnatic exerting their power, not through skirmishing and fighting, but through the control that they get over the mid lane and access to the river. And with that control wards, like you just mentioned, it makes it so much easier um, for Reckless and Hilly to pick up those free plates and then to immediately rotate topside and push SK off of this Rift Herald. Which is important to do. Rift, they've already secured the Ocean Drake. And uh, see if they want to set up for another objective. I feel like Dreams is perpetually looking for an engage here. That's the Nautilus life. It's, it's so funny to me because there's so many parallels between Dreams and Hillisang. Well, I feel like Hillisang... There's a lot of parallels between SK and Fnatic, like it's, stylistically. It's uncomfortable a little bit. Nemesis and Broxa, though, going to look to shift things up. Crown Child, of course, does have the cleanse, but does not have the ultimate. And Nemesis is very strong right now. Uses his stun, though. Uh, still diving Nautilus and Zaya. Scary. Now, Crown Shot doesn't have access to ultimate, but he does have flash and cleanse. So I do like the fact that Fnatic, they're, they're cheating that way. They are starting to uh, build up small incremental leads for themselves in like, their individual lanes, but they're not going to just pull the trigger and throw everything away. They're being respectful still. Reckless, though, out of mana. Means that SK can probably take control of this lane once again. He is going to back off. Most likely will return to complete his first item. 
see if he can actually get an optimal back timing here. Yeah, will be the Essence Reaver as well as the free boots coming through. Of course, nerfed um, since we last saw them. Only coming in now. 12 minutes into the game. Frostgren. One item on each of our two to three item AD carries. I mean, I already told you that this wasn't going to be a one item, one item game. I I'm know sorry. you did, but I want you to... I want you to lie to me. Tell me they're going to fight. They're, gonna, they're not going to... Uh, <sighs> I mean, they could. It's Fnatic versus SK, but again, right now, it feels like Fnatic are in control of this game because they have the priority in the mid lane mm -hmm. through the kill mm -hmm. pressure um, because Nemesis is... Aurelia. Really terrifying. Yes. And so it's uh, Fnatic in the driver's seat and kind of gets a pick. Okay, do we want to fight? Do we want to look for picks right now? This is the hilly special. Gank in the mid lane. The slow, steady walk forward. Now remember the ward that you mentioned earlier in the game. No longer there. So Hillisang does have the freedom to walk up here. Completely not going to get spotted out. And... Okay, Hillisang. That, that, he is... You miss 100% of the shots you, you don't take. Exactly, but also that was like the, that would have hit if he was like super mega challenger for sure. That's exactly where he would have stood. Broxa's right. looking for the gank. Uh, I, Pyrian, I, how much do you want it? I feel like you could have waited on that one. Broxa. Pyrian doesn't even know he's playing Minesweeper right now, but he absolutely is. There it is. Swing and a miss. That's two skill shots. It's like, Pyrian, do you know you're walking through a minefield right now? He's like, what? Strolling. How many people are coming to kill me in the mid lane? We, Casual, though. We've now got this tug of war where uh, people just shove waves forward and then everyone starts cutting in towards the mid lane. Someone's going to get uh, restless in a second and just try to force a play. Yeah. Whippo was getting a little restless on the trade there. Goes in, obviously trying to fight for lane pressure, but does give up a lot of life in response. And Broxa, free access to this Herald. And I like how Fnatic have transitioned that bot side vision into some top side vision to secure this Herald. It's a good look overall. Reckless and Hillisang now moving into the mid lane as well. So just a nice shift up to the top side of the map for Fnatic, willing to give up some of those, uh, some of that pressure on the bottom side now that the plates are gone to focus on the mid lane. That one Ooh, hit. hits, and that's going to be the hook he was looking for. Reckless grabbing the kill. Pyrian couldn't dodge them all. Well played. And every single one of Fnatic's lanes is winning right now. And look at what a difference that means for SK and Selfmade in particular when he doesn't or he can't find a point on the map to attack. This just looks like a completely different jungle. When was the last time you saw Selfmade? 60 minutes in a game, 0-0-0. Zero, zero, and zero. I, I don't actually think I've ever seen that, Frostburn. It's, now, got a, it's got that good farm, but... Yeah, and SK, look, they got the one objective thus far, but other than that, it's a 4K gold lead coming through for Fnatic. You've got a 20 CS lead for Bobo on the top side of the map even, but you've got a 20 CS lead in the mid lane as well. Yes, Brox is a little bit behind, but the plate gold that they were able to grab in the early game on top of the tower, and now the Mountain Drake as well. Fnatic completely in the driver's seat, and Mountain Drake on a team that wants to push, wants to take towers, and eventually could want to take objectives here is, is a frustrating prospect to play against. And again, it's a reminder that if this was going to be a slower paced game than the last game that we just saw, both SK and Fnatic, probably in comms, are fine with that because they feel that they have the appropriate tools when it comes to late game. But I just feel like you got to lean towards the Fnatic camp here. Uh, I don't think I'm out of line saying that they're probably the favorites coming to this game, especially for how they finish third place uh, over SK's, you know, miracle playoff attempt. And also, Reck was saying that, like, that wasn't good Fnatic. That was like a work in progress kind of Fnatic. But this is Fnatic. new Fnatic. True. But we also know that this is a work in progress SK because Sakurai has just joined the lineup. So while last split you might have given SK kind of some of the benefit of the doubt as we move into mid to late game team fights as they do have some strength there, especially with a player like Crouch on their lineup, we don't know how Sakurai is going to fit into this puzzle, what he is actually going to provide as we move later in the Feels game. like the expectation should have been a lot more top lane camp, however, and trying to snowball him ahead. So... You know, it's always hard to tell what you're going to get in the game. There's still plenty of time left, but it just feels like they're kind of playing PvE. Let's get trying to force. That was good. Going to go the for the double play. Crown shot, though. Uncontested on the backside. It's going to throw down a good amount of damage on the The lockup is there. The follow-up CC goes golden. Dream's now caught out in the middle of the team. We've got two TPs coming in. The fight stops for a brief moment, but SK, can they make it out? Dreams is going to be the sacrificial Nautilus. Will walk away. Sakura not going to get anything else. Fnatic coming out on top once again. I mean, that is a, that's Hilly getting a sick flay and then missing the death sentence on the immobile target. Whippo, fiercely stepping forward here. Megan R is on the way in. Can just look to extend the play. Where is he going to go? Flash forward, Nar in the wall! Big moves from Whippo. Selfmade is going to look to punish Sakura. He's going to get the shutdown, however. A bit of gold into his pocket, but the hook lands over the wall. Hilly coming online in the mid game. 
That's flipping those coins, and any time it pops up heads, you rem uh, you're reminded why Hilly is such an amazing playmaker right there. 0, 1, and 5 right now on this Thresh, participating in only, or most of the kills, only a single kill outside of his death. Sentence. Nailed it. It's day one. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I liked how you bought time to try to figure out what the percentage was on 5 out of 6, and you're like, why couldn't it be 4 out of 5? Why couldn't it be easier? Oh. Math on air, folks. Very difficult. Some of you are mocking us. You're much better at mental math than we are. Anyway, 19 minutes into the game, just about. About a 6K gold lead for Fnatic. So just I'd like say a quiet 6K gold lead at 19 minutes. That's actually massive. It's huge. We've had actually incredibly quick games today. I thought the G2 game was like an outlier, and it feels more like it might be a pace setter after the Misfits game we saw, and now this Fnatic game as well. So while in the past these SK games have felt very S or SK versus Fnatic games felt SK dominated, this one is a very different story. Yeah, so right there, that's a sick play to catch the Jarvan ride out, and you're like, yes, Hilly is back on the thresh. We've got this, boys. Uh, and then this one is unfortunate. But it doesn't matter, because the rest of Fnatic, they responded, and they are able to chase down SK and really punish them. Of course, this replay brought to you by Alienware. Tons of value in an Alienware, just like there's tons of value on that sick gnarl. Nailed it. Uh, anyway, Whippo makes it out as well, so just a highlight moment for him, but now the oh, immediate oh. turn. Oh, it's Dunk City. They're killing them all, folks. Now the dash over the wall. Sakurai has to flash to safety. The cocoon lands as well. Broxon, no, you can't thread it like that. Perian puts up a wall, tries to buy time, but Hillsang comes over. The shutdown going through. Sakurai picking up all of the cleanup it's kills, fair. but dies before he can pop off. The Blossom will not connect, and it's crown shot all on his lonesome standing under that tower. It's just disgusting. In the last five minutes, all the skill shots are hitting. They're being layered beautifully right there. That was another cocoon. To oh, oh, God, it's <laughs> highlight reel after highlight reel. Crown shot. Clean plays. Dodges the cocoon with the ultimate and then gets the flash to make sure that he locks down Broxa. Very nicely done. Sliding, gliding. This is a one two step game. Yeah, I like it. People are moving in this game. We're, we're not even at three items yet, Frost Grand Already people are going in. That said, Crown Shot, you, you did get the nice highlight play. Well done. Um, it's still close to a 10,000 gold difference between let's, the two let's teams. Let's be clear here. We're praising him for the highlight play. SK is still getting smashed. Very difficult position to be in. 20 minutes into the game, Fnatic with a Mountain Drake, with so many of their members looking very strong. They don't have the fastest take in the world on that Baron, but given how far ahead they are, I feel like it's gonna be much faster than people expect, and things are only going to get harder for SK. They've really yet to find a team fight. They've just been dove over and over and over again. They just keep starting these fights on the back foot. Um, they're going to approach this dragon, although I, I would really say that they should back off. I think SK agree. Two items now coming in, forcing out ultimate there. Reckless using his ultimate back. Dreams has now overstayed his welcome. We'll get the aftershock proc, but it's too little, too late. Reckless now dominating. Boomerang coming in from Whippo. Can chase him down if he wants to, but will back off. Fnatic have their eyes on the real prize, and that is the second mountain. Nemesis and Broxa will get this one kicked off. So the control ward is cleared, and SK are just forced to match in mid lane. And it just feels like SK just keep throwing the same punch, and unfortunately, it's just not working. They need to kind of change up the playbook because they keep looking for these scrappy fights, these attempted picks, and they are just running head first into the meat grinder. Really un uh, unfortunate. Kind of painful to watch. There's a lot of, yes, spinning blades on this team. Bit difficult. <sighs> Fnatic, I feels like now that they have this deep vision looked in, if we look at the top side of the jungle here, it's just so hard for SK to move out. And is this just the point where Fnatic just take over this Baron pit? I mean, Fnatic could play this game out in multiple ways because of how far ahead their solo laners are well uh, are as well as their ADC. Like, if they want to, you could just group up and you could use the Reckless, three items, 6 0 and 4 right now, and you could just mow people over. Or, if you want, you can play into the side lanes. Whippo's got a Thorn Mail. Who can deal with him? Nemesis is massive on Aurelia. Who can deal with her? Brox also has double magic pen items and it's a level 11 elise, so I don't think that there's... Oh, crown shot! That is both of the defensive options burned for one of the stronger members on the SK lineup. That is going to make the coming fights much more difficult. And it was basically entirely in response to a single Q from Thresh and the uh, Sivir ultimate for just, you know, the terrifying measure. Just gotta scare him. It worked. Crown and shot, got it hooked. It makes Clients, it that ulted. much easier to walk over to the Baron and to either bait and just wait, because now the ADC missing huge key uh, cooldowns. And I like this. They know that they have total control. Nemesis moves into the top side, the member whose TP is on cooldown. Whippo, the member who has TP, up and available, pushing in. Now, SK, I'll say, very brave move to move into that jungle without perfect information, but they saw Nemesis' top side. 
So not the end of the world. And Bupa now backing off, ready to TP in if needed. Do you ever miss talking about rage management on NARC? I mean, at this point, it really doesn't matter. You're not, <laughs> you're not super dependent on the Meganars, like the game changing. It's like, moment. honestly, if Mininar TP's in, we're, we're still probably fine. It's gonna poke him. Ooh. I wonder if they'll ever change that. That has to be the most, the best feeling when you escape and the worst feeling when they don't. Guys, you don't need three members to do the Baron. Fun fact, two. Fnatic have kicked it off. 9k gold lead for Fnatic, making it quite easy. SK don't even know what's happening because they see so many members of the Fnatic lineup on the map. Dreams, the only member wise to the play, is going to step forward, but it's too little too late. Baron will drop for Fnatic. 10k gold lead. Yep, we've crossed over the marker, and now Fnatic full control. How do they want to close it out? Do they want to continue to play these side lanes? Do they want to group up? They can just hard dive the tower at this point. Again, Crownshot does have access to his uh, his ultimate, but doesn't have flash and cleanse. And maybe Fnatic decide that without those key defensive summoners, it's enough that they could look for the dive. Don't have to. Again, they can play the 1-3-1. One, one. You've seen Nemesis and uh, Whippo going out to your side lanes. The, the world is their oyster. However they want to attack this game, they get to decide. And that's what I think is so frustrating about playing, playing as a pick like an Aurelia and why do we, we do see her ban so much is that she's a pretty good team fighter and she's a fantastic split pusher. So very difficult to stop this champion from taking over. And even Whippo has itemized for a bit of attack speed, happy to play more for the 1v1. Look at how confident uh, Reckless and Hilly are that they just kind of go on their own adventures into the jungle, just hunting for kids. Reckless talked about, you know, he felt like this play was going to start off on a good note and this is a pretty good note. 10k goldie, five towers to zero. Absolute vision control on the top side. Whip was pushing in. Now and, matched. You know, maybe this means that we need to uh, reassess expectations because it feels like, you know, Dragos, you and I were feeling that this was very Fnatic favored, but ultimately, if you look at the history, SK probably felt pretty good going yeah. into this matchup. You know, Fnatic didn't want to face them into the playoffs, uh, didn't have the, the winning record against them in the regular split. Um, and I think what's really interesting is kind of goal setting. You know, where are the goalposts for both these teams and what good looks like? For Fnatic, it feels like, you know, either win Worlds or the fans will never be pleased. For SK, though, is it just another repeat into the playoffs, or are they looking for more? Well, we heard from Selfmade uh, in an interview that he talked about, you know, there's nothing to be proud about, being a mediocre team making into playoffs, not making your mark, and it feels like they had their aspirations set higher, and given that 2-0 that you talked about already, it does feel like maybe we expected SK to come in on more even footing. As a team that sh uh, showed us so much in their first split, we thought, hey, the second split has to be better right off the bat, but they have made changes. Things have been shifted up, and Fnatic have clearly only gotten more and more confident in the roster they started this year with. I definitely expected a lot more out of SK than this. It, it really has felt like a bit of a spectator mode as they just watch Fnatic roll over them. Yeah, sad state to be in. Of course, tons of target bans directed at Selfmade. Have to wonder if he is as comfortable on this Jarvan as he is on something like the Rek'Sai. I like the Lee Sin, one of those options that was taken away, that was limited. But for now, SK holding on. Once again, late game. If you go late enough, can be a much closer fight than a lot of people may expect. But Nar does a lot of damage. I'm holding that back much, much later in the game. So for now, SK very much on the back foot, doing everything they can to hold on to these inhibitors. Once one falls, it feels like probably the end of the game. They are just getting chipped away at not just their towers, however, but also their health bars. And this is one of the uh, the obnoxious things when you're facing the likes of a Sivir and a very strong Gnar right now is dealing with that long range uh, chip damage. Oof. One tower down, two towers down. It's like they synced it up. Inhibitor next on the list. Both bot lane and mid lane inhibitor. Of course, 18 seconds left on the Baron buff. Selfmade, though, flashing forward on it. Whippo wants to get something kicked off. Will force the flash back. Not going to amount to too much. The hook going wide from Hillisang. Good control ward there to stop any vision being placed over the wall so we can continue to fish from Fog of War and Azir Tower. It's going to buy a bit of time as well as clear out some of these minions, but now they're setting their sights on the top side of the map. It is a slow controlled bleed out. Fnatic do not want to give SK a chance to get their head up from underwater. And instead, we'll just slowly close in and look to end the game. Actually, very curious that Fnatic played it so cautiously right there. Now, the thing about SK's composition is when they are all grouped up, it can still be very devastating. Again, we always talk about like the wombo combo. But the thing is, is they did a good job playing all three lanes to make sure that SK were never in a position where they were grouped up, where they felt confident to pull the trigger together. But without having access to the flash and the cataclysm, I thought for sure that Fnatic would be like, okay, it's time to end the game. They don't have one of their key engage ultimates. Um, so I personally feel like they could have pushed the envelope a little bit more, especially if they do happen to wipe there. 
you know, there's not like you trade back a Baron. Mm. I think they're they're playing this one a bit more respectful than I think the uh, the gold difference says. Ah! Disaster! Got him! <laughs> Kobe! Anyway, nailed that one. Good job, Whippo. That Cloud Dragon put up more of a fight than I think nah, they have this game. Ooh. Ooh. Fair. All right. Frostgrown, the one thing I will give Fnatic credit for is that they used every second of that Baron buff. It felt like to good effect, that they made the most of all those empowered cannon creeps. And now that if they do want to kick off a fight, they still have a bit of time where self-made flash is down. And they can just group as five and walk down mid lane and break these inhibitors. Whippo now stepping forward. Crown Shot immediately has to run, though, burning the flash as well. Snare is going to connect. Pyrian throwing back a little bit of damage. Brox on the back side. Once again, small incremental advantages for Fnatic. Getting some of those cooldowns backing off. Not looking to overextend, but self-made in dreams or hoping to find the punish. Teams really love death rushing in that specific rush. It's a high traffic area. Get him. <laughs> Fnatic not going to take the bait. We'll move up. Will they make a death rush of their own? There's a numbers advantage for SK here, at least initially. If they find someone and can quickly delete them, they can, you know, turn the tides for themselves. And the battle for the red buff crown shot does come out on top. I like that SK are always a team that are willing to continue trying, however. There are so many teams in the past in the LEC or the EU LCS that we've seen just when they start to lose, they just keep losing and they bleed out. They don't really do anything, but SK are still moving, still posturing. Like, if they see that pick, if they find that opportunity, they will take it. Just feels like they have a, a narrow window to look for those opportunities because I have a feeling that we're going to see the ultimates come back up for Aurelia and Sivir, and then Fnatic are going to try a very similar manu maneuver where they literally just sprint at someone. Oh, look, there it is the sprint at someone maneuver. TP coming in on the backside. Self made might need to make his way out to safety. That is a mega gnar. If he gets in the midst of the team, it will be disaster. But leaping forward, throwing it back. Not going to get much done, though. Pyrian's still alive. Nemesis going to the backside. Crown shot is there. They're focusing down the Aurelia. But no, not enough. Steric's gauge by Nemesis of plenty of time. Brox leaping forward onto Pyrian. The double kill comes through for the Fnatic jungler. Crown shot goes golden, but he just gets to watch himself die. Another kill going over in favor of Fnatic, and that's going to be it. It's over. We were just waiting for the cooldowns. Fnatic showed that they had the confidence. They couldn't make it stick the first time around, but they got the key summoners from Crown Shot and made good on it the second time around. They will not be 4-0'd. Fnatic strike back against SK. And with confidence, Fnatic opened the split. SK could not find their footing in the game, could not find any opportunities, and it is dominance from Fnatic in their first match. And frankly, it just looked a little bit too easy. There was the the staples from a Fnatic game, you know, the early TPs into Reckless's lane, but it was Nemesis who was the big beneficiary picking up those kills. And once he had control, once he had the power pick like the Aurelia, it was how he used that uh, control in the mid lane into the river to just start pushing pressure around and taking whatever they wanted. And how much attention Pyrian got so difficult to play against. There's just so much setup CC. There's so much follow up CC as well in that Fnatic lineup. And well played overall. Never felt like they were out of the driver's seat. Felt like they were in total control. Outside of maybe one play on the bottom side of the map in the early game, it was a story of Fnatic dominance here in their first match on stage. And for SK, I feel like we've been left a little wanting. Need to see what they can show in their match tomorrow. So for now, they didn't get to show us a lot. I feel like the SK dream is that you get self-made, again, on a very aggressive jungle pick. And I really want to see him team up with their new top laner. Because that's what I've been hyped about. I keep hearing that this guy uh, was popping off in EU Masters, that he can really be a carry. And I, I would love to see SK kind of diversify their play style with a carry-oriented top laner, and then just start going hard in the paint. Fortunately, uh, this game, very much a slow start. Absolutely. And what was expected to be a slow start, you know, we talked about how this could totally just be that three item team fighting game. The thing that I liked about Fnatic is they did still see those opportunities, they did still catch it. And it feels like they set themselves up more for that thing that you're talking about where you pass into the baton, where they had threats in the early game, they had the Aurelia, they had the Elise, where it moved nicely into mid game where you've got that one item Gnar, Sipper who can be that wave clear functionality, and Fresh who obviously makes an excellent roamer. And Seems like they really set themselves up for a game that they wanted to play. It was actually a really good example of kind of the similarities and the difference between SK. The fact that SK Gaming uh, constantly look for these scrappy fights, they're uh, a very fast team to pull the trigger, whereas like Fnatic, they, they set up kind of that perfect moment where the cooldowns are all there, they know that if they catch you, that that's how they end. And uh, I feel like, it almost feels like the evolution for SK Gaming would be to get closer to Fnatic's playstyle because there are such similarities there. And it feels like at some points they did capitalize on that well, but they just weren't able to make more out of it. 
think you make a good point. We'll look at this. Of course, we can take a look back at the big fight for Fnatic 20 minutes in, where we see a lot of that team fighting prowess, that ability to punish some of these small cooldowns not being available. I'm trying to remember which fight this one was. Ah, I remember. It was the one Dreams disappeared in. That's a nightmare. Really difficult spot for old mate Nautilus. And of course, reminder, we did see Aftershock nerfed. At level one, you get the same resistances, but you do need to build armor and MR to get back to the point where it used to be. And even if you build a ton of armor and MR, it will only get back to an even state with the unnerfed version. And a nice highlight there that there might have been one very crucial member absent from the fight. But also a nice highlight here is this one, Shabloosh. That's the sound effect. They won't let me make it. They prefer the feathers sound effect. I prefer Shabloosh. I would love a Zayas just <laughs> sound effect by you. <laughs> That's the dream. Well, after the break, guys, we are going to hear from Broxa. Look at that. That is a straight wall. We got the, the, the cliff in a previous game. We get the wall in this game. Difficult climb for SK. Of course, Fnatic, though, making it look easy. And uh, when you talk about it, I think it's hard. Who, who do you pick out in this game as your, like, your one standout player? Uh, I You're potentially your key player of the game. Uh, I think each Fnatic member had their moments. I liked Nemesis in the early game, especially with the initial uh, trigger on the teleport pole. Um, I loved Broxa aggressive in Elise, and I think uh, Hilly. Oh, did I get it? No, what? <laughs> Reckless. Where's Nemesis? He played Sipper. And he, he had a really good KDA. So many people had a really good KDA. Of course, Broxa set up a lot in the Elise in the early game. And I think that has to feel good for Broxa because remember that he is, while it's not about Broxa underperforming, it was about Dan performing very well, it still feels like there has to be a certain degree of uncertainty and that confidence from winning would be huge. But of course, vote for who you want to vote for. There are three options. Twitter at all esports is the place. Coming up next, it is our final game of the day. Schalke, Noel, Fear, and Excel Esports take to the stage. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. Good work. Thanks. You too. As predicted.